today I wanted to show you how I track behaviors in my classroom so that I can have a list and document the behaviors that happen in my classroom. In the past, I used to email myself and put the student's name in the subject line and then just sort it by folders according to what period I have them. It was very doable, but there's an easier way using Google Forms. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. Hello and welcome. I am Mrs. P. Tarleton, all about technology, teaching, and treasures. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell. So head on over, grab a blank Google Form, title it, whatever you put in this top line, if you click up here where the title goes, it will copy that. My first question is going to be, what period do I have the students? If you are an elementary school teacher, instead of listing the periods, I would list all my students' names here. You wanna make sure it's multiple choice. For high school, if you just start typing in all your periods, click here, add all. If you don't teach period one through five, you can just go ahead and add your additional period here. And then over here on the side, click on the X to remove whichever period you do not teach. In my case, I don't teach six periods. I wanna make sure I make that required. Add another section. Elementary school teachers, you can skip this part because you don't need to ask for the name. And I like to keep it separate first name and last name. It helps with sorting, make it required. It's short answer. The next one's gonna be last name. So if I go here to duplicate, then everything's already set. It adds another question and all I have to do is change the word first to last. Add another section. Everyone's gonna do this section. This is where we'll list what behavior we need to document. Helping others, participation, these are positive things disruption, and of course in high school we have the cell phone issue. Leave this as check boxes, then you can check multiple boxes. So add another question. And in this section, additional info, and I'm gonna make it multiple choice, yes or no. Click on know it all, automatically add that for me. Make that also required so I don't miss a step. And then I'm gonna add another section. This section is going to be where I'm going to actually type in any additional information. Let's add the question and it's going to be paragraph. And if we get to this section, we want it required. So now that we have this additional info section, go back up to your yes and no question. Right here, these three little dots will now allow you to go to a section based on your answer. So go to section based on answer. If we have additional information we wanna add, we wanna go to section two. That's where our additional information section is going to be. If we click no, then we wanna go to submit form and we are done. So we've already got this additional section down here. Once we're finished with this, it automatically goes to submit form. Once you have that, capture this link. You can create a QR code using this link and then have it posted near your desk. The other option is to just save this to your desktop and then you have it ready to go. So here it is, choose what period, type the student's name that I'm documenting, and what behaviors was Matt showing in class? Well, he was participating, but then he also had a cell phone out, so I can document actually both of those. Go down here, did I wanna add additional information? If so, I click yes, and then go to next. And it will take me to where I can type in the additional information. So I can document and then I would submit the form. Now, if I go in here and I take a look, fill this out again, that was participating today. And if I go here to no, click on no, it will take you right to submit the form and you're done. So what do you do with this information once you get all that wonderful data? Let's go back to the form. Notice now I have two responses. Click on responses. It'll show you your responses. It'll give you these wonderful pie charts. Shows you what period. Shows you the behaviors being tracked. Shows you how often 
you had additional information. But even better than that, if you go to this green little present, that's your spreadsheet, create a spreadsheet. Once you've created it once, it'll just automatically update your spreadsheet. This will give you the date and time that you inputted this. So if you input it the same day, you will always know what day Matt was participating, Matt was not participating. And over here, it has all the additional information that you have added. And this is a nice running record. So if you have any parent conferences, anything like that, you want to sort this by name, by period. You just highlight the column that you want to sort. You go to data, sort this sheet from A to Z, and it will put it in alphabetical order. If you want to check here, what is the behavior that you're mostly documenting? You could do that as well. You can sort the behaviors. You can sort by period, whatever column you want to sort by. Because remember, you're going to have a long list of data. But this is really helpful because this is something you can actually group together. You have a parent-teacher conference and you can pull up all your documentation. The good, the bad, and maybe sometimes the ugly. Is this something you can implement in your classroom? I know it's made tracking much easier than my email. This is really easy. Let me know in the comments if this is something that will work for you. Remember, step out, be uniquely wonderful you. And until next week, why don't you check out these videos? Have a great day.